All right, let's have a minute on the floor. <clears throat> And as usual, just let's wash away the past and postpone the future. And just try to get information about the floor, the body on the floor, your clothing, what's pressing, what's not pressing what's free, what's not free, areas of tension. And as usual, we're gonna start with maybe movement that we all familiar with, and we'll try to go into the most subtle and figure out where it starts. And maybe we come to a place that we can make it more efficient, improve the organization, and it will be a journey that each one of us is taking on our own. So let's turn in a minute, we're gonna to turn to the left side and we're gonna to try to organize ourselves to lie down on the left side in the most comfortable place that you can. So if you need to put cushions, use cushions, so go ahead and roll to your left. And you're gonna start the class on the left. You may need to put something underneath the head. It may be, even be your left hand or a little pillow. And one leg will be on top of the other, 90 degrees. And we're going to start with the right hand in front of the chest. And the elbow is pointing pretty much up towards the ceiling. On the, the, hand, the right hand is on the floor in front of the chest with the elbow pointing up towards the ceiling. So the fingers are somewhere pointing towards our number one or two. And find out where are your ribs. Maybe you need to kind of squish a little and wiggle a little bit and find room for the left ribs. And we're going to start by moving the right knee, rolling it over the left knee. The knee, only the knee, not the foot, not the foot. We're just rolling the right knee over the left knee and we're coming back. The foot is staying completely restful. So the movement of, there you go, the movement comes from the pelvis. The right knee is rolling. So it's not about how far you can go. See if you can feel the rollingness. And if it really rolls, then maybe the heel wants to leave the other heel. What's connected to what? When the knee rolls over the other one, it pulls the femur bone with it. It rolls, it pulls the hip bone, the right side of the hip bone. Is it a straight line or is it a curved line? Is the heel leaving the other heel just a little bit, mirroring what's happening up in the hip? freedom does the femur bone has to glide out of the hole in the hip and back into the hole in the hip. So picture in your mind's eye the femur, the bone that goes from the knee up into the hip, gliding out and gliding in. 
is it in a straight line or does even the bone has a slight curving line? Can you picture it? Can you sense it? When you roll the knee, is it going straight or is it pointing closer to the floor? Can you make it easier and easier and easier? Because we're not trying to do an exercise with the leg or with the hip. We're trying to find the relationship and the organization. So if we do have tiredness or some kind of misfunctioning, we can maybe give it up and find a better way. And go back into the center and make sure that you're comfortable on your left ribs and on your left hip. And let go the leg and let go the elbow and just rest there for a minute. And now let's glide the knee backwards, not the foot. We're gliding the knee backwards, which means the femur bone has to go, knee on, no, foot on top of foot. Foot is not moving. It's the knee pushing the femur into the hip and coming back. It may be just a tiny little millimeter. It may be even in the imagination. But the gliding of the femur into the hip bone should be a clear movement, even if it's small. It's not happening from the feet, but happens from the femur gliding in and gliding out. Now we're gonna go both forward Keep it small, but keep it clear. Think about teaching somebody the right way to write alphabet, not about just writing big or fancy. Just the mechanics where to start the letter, where to go. The more you get clear in your mind's eye, about the trajectory of the femur bone out of the hip bone and back in towards the hip bone, the clearer it will get in the physical body. But we have to engage the imagination, the awareness, the thinking, the sensing, the feeling, our whole self. And if there is a slight discomfort in one of the areas as you're moving through, pay attention to it and maybe make it smaller. When you bring the leg, the femur back in, does your knee want to come slightly up? And when you bring the femur forward, does the knee want to roll off the other, go down towards the floor and the heel comes up? When you go towards the hip bone, does the knee want to come up and maybe even the toes of the other foot now allow them to come up a little bit? See it moving the, from toes to heel, and from knee down to knee up helps the pelvis. So now we're allowing the heel to come up a little bit when we go forward and we allow the toes to come up when we go back. And even more than that, when we roll the knee forward and the femur goes forward, allow the eyes to roll down towards the floor. And when the heel rests and the toes come up, the eyes come up. And now we are connecting the lower part of arms 
back with the upper part of the upper. So the eyes are moving with the movement of the femur in and out. When the femur comes out, the eyes are going down towards the floor. And when the femur goes back in, the eyes are rolling up towards the ceiling. Find a good place for your hand, because now the movement is getting maybe a little bit bigger when the eyes are up, and you're rolling a little bit on your ribs, and you need a little bit more support from your right hand. So make sure that you find a good place for it on, in front of your chest. When the eyes are rolling up, your head may be rolling up with it. And you may be on a slightly different place on your ribs, on your left ribs. How much information can you gather for yourself in the way that you're organizing yourself? Change a few things, explore, and find out what works for you the best. Doesn't matter what I say. <clears throat> I'm painting a road, you walk on the road, and you pick the flowers that you want, and you let go what doesn't work. <clears throat> and rest in the center and roll back to your back and let's see how this pelvis fits and how this leg fits. Let's straighten our legs and take that right leg that worked and bend it a little bit, rotate the knee up towards the ceiling and straighten it. So we're just bending it a little bit, just like a beginning of a pulling up. Tiny little bit to see if the rotation in the hip joint is any freer, and if the discomfort that one of us felt in that hip joint is still there or has it changed. And let go. Take a couple of breaths here. <clears throat> and we're going to roll back to the left side. And again, place yourself in a good place on the left side of the ribs. And put your right hand in a good place that gives you nice support so you're not rolling forward or back. And lengthen your right leg. Leave the left leg bent 90 degrees and lengthen your right leg. And start drawing a line with your big, with the side of your foot. A little bit forward and a little bit back as if it was the hanging part from a big cloak on the wall and it kind of does a tiny little bit of an arc at the bottom a little bit forward and a little bit back see if you can sense where is the needle and when you start going back and when is the middle and when do you start going forward and how much effort does it take to have this long lean so the next time that you come a little forward allow your knee to bend a little bit and when you come down it straightens and when it comes back it bends and when it comes down it straightens and when it comes up it bends 
So see if you can get the knee to help the straightness of the leg as it arcs. And what do you have to do with your lower back to make it work and not be too hard? So when the knee comes forward and up, maybe your belly button will come closer to your spine and you're going to round your lower back a little bit. And when your leg goes back and the knee bends, you get a little bit of an arc in your lower back. See if you can find it. Tiny little bit of space between the vertebrae when the knees come when the knee comes up. And contraction in the lower back and arch. Tiny little when the knee goes back. And when you swing the leg forward. Your belly button comes closer to the spine and your lumbar is getting rounded. Your foot is on the floor so it doesn't take a lot of effort. Try to make it as easy as possible because it's not an easy movement. Allow the eyes to go down when the knee comes up, as if you want to look at the knee. You're not going to see it, but just the direction. And see if you can get your eyes at least to the horizon or a little higher when the leg arching back. So you, again, you were trying to get more of the body all the way up to the eyes and the head. All the way. So a little rounding and a little arching. And the eyes are moving. Maybe the chin is even moving. And the arc that you have in the foot is mimicked with the arc at the top of the head. And go ahead and rest the knee, roll to the back. Notice the conversation that you are having internally with your right side versus your left side. Does your right side feel more open, lighter, heavier, airier, more condensed? What is the difference between the two sides? And in this position, get the whole right leg going into the pelvis and coming out of the pelvis. And retracting into the pelvis. Allow the heel to slide on your mat. And notice the direction that the foot is taking following the movement of the bone, the femur bone, going from the knee into the hip. See if you can see in your mind's eye the shape of the bone coming from the knee up, getting an angle <clears throat> and going to the center of the hip. See if you can see the pelvis moving as the leg comes out, just like we did on the side. Can you feel the heel rolling from outside to inside as you're pulling the leg out? 
Is your foot connected to your lower leg, connected to your upper leg, connected to your pelvis? And let's roll to the other side. So we're going to be laying on our right side. Find a good place for the ribs. <coughs> and remember that this side may feel completely different. So take time to organize your body to feel really comfortable, as comfortable as you can in this position. We are in nine, on the side, 90 degrees between the upper leg and the lower leg. The left hand is in front of the chest with the elbow pointing up. The fingers will be somewhere in our 11. depending on what's comfortable for you. Find a good place for your head. And we're gonna find out what it takes to roll the knee forward and what it takes the knee to roll back into the pelvis. On this side, we may have very similar story or we have a very different story. What is the tracking on this side? Is the femur bone, the thigh bone, sliding in and out of the pelvis comfortably? And since you already know what we have done on the other side, pick up the area that's maybe not as clear in your mind. Maybe the going in into the pelvis is very clear, but going out, get a little stuck or stuckish. So maybe you want to spend more time. Don't force it, just explore it with curiosity. Maybe you want the knee to be a little higher or lower. Maybe you want to put that foot on top of the foot in a little slight angle. What would enable that trajectory to happen in the most efficient, clearest way? And as you're doing the movement and you're getting acquainted, acquaintanced <laughs> with that side, start gathering the flowers on the way, start gathering information. Is my hip bone on the left side moving forward when I bring the bone of the leg forward? 
is my hip bone moving backwards when I'm trying to bring the hip bone, the thigh bone into my pelvis? Is my ilium on the left side is responding and if it does, is it going straight or is it arcing? What kind of a line in space my hip bone is making? And does it involve my lower back? Since you know that eventually we're gonna connect it to the rest of the spine and the head and the neck and the eyes. Can you start involving them, inviting them and see if they're responsive? Maybe you need more time. When the knee rolls forward, what happens to your heel? Did it leave the other heel? Even just tiny little bit. When the knee rolls back, do you tend to want to maybe lift the knee and maybe the big toe? And where the bunny is, if you have one. How much of you is responding to the task of moving the thigh bone forward and back, which we're doing every step? Is your top foot sliding off the lower foot? Is it in response to the movement of the upper leg or the heel? How is it different if the foot is not one on top of the other or is on top of the other? The foot is part of our walking. Are your eyes rolling down towards the floor when the knee rolls no, down towards the floor? Are your eyes rolling up towards the ceiling when the knee goes in towards the pelvis and up? Are you starting to have a tiny little bit of rolling on your ribs? Forward and back on the side. But if you allow the knee to open, eventually you're going to be rolling on your back. That's not where we're going today, but can you see that happening? Rest on the side, stretch your elbows. Find a good place to lay on the side, and we're going to start lengthening the left leg. And we're going to do an arc forward. Coming back to length long and arc back. We're going to start with a straight leg. We're going to do it a few times with a straight leg. We're going to notice the effort. We're going to notice where center is. As we're coming through, do we feel the center?
is the leg pulling the pelvis? Is the pelvis pulling the lumbar? Is there an arc, a shortening in your lower back when the leg goes back? And is there a rounding of the lower back when the leg goes forward? And once you find it, make it a little easier by bending the knee. When you go back, and bend the knee a little bit when you go forward. Swinging back and the eyes go a little bit above the horizon. You swinging forward and the eyes are going down as if they're checking to see you know. So there is a small response between the top part of your spine to the bottom part of your spine. So the leg is straight when it's in the middle and it's bent when it's forward and it's straight when it's in the middle and it's bent when it's forward. And how does my hip respond to the leg movement? And how does my lower back and my upper back and my arms are responding to the swinging of my leg? And go ahead and roll to the back and rest and see what it feels like. We did way shorter time on this side. But many times when we spend time learning on one side, the transfer to the other side is quick and easy. How's the right, right side? How's the left side? Go ahead and bend the left knee a little bit and bring the knee up and lengthen it and see if bending of the knee and rolling involve the rotation of your left pelvis. So you don't just bring the knee, turn the knee, lengthen the leg without the hip responding, but as you're drawing the knee up a little bit, the pelvis rolls to the side. As the knee comes up, the pelvis rolls up and it relaxes when the leg lengthens. And when that feels good, start doing once the right and once the left. And they should be responding to one another. So nothing stops. When one comes up, the other one comes down. It's like you're riding a bicycle. And the pelvis is rocking from side to side as the knees are bending a little bit and straightening a little bit. You can put your fingers on the ilium bone and feel the rocking of the pelvis responding to the movement of your legs. 
So if you can kind of pick at me for a second, it's a tiny little bit bend. It's not a big bend. It's just enough to roll the pedals of the, my bike. It's a little bike. It's not a big bike. Can you make the right side and the left side respond in the same tempo, in the same smoothness, in the same ease? And when you get tired, of course, you stop, you assess, you feel, you go over it in your mind's eye. And then maybe you can do it again. Maybe you want to do it slower. Finding out the lengthening of the leg from the hip versus the shortening. The shortening comes on the side. The lengthening comes once the knee is up towards the ceiling. But don't bend the knee all the way up. It's coming from the outside. Let me borrow your neck. Yeah. Halfway up, halfway up. There and th th even this. There you go, and this one comes up, this one comes down. It's like swimming, it's like riding a bike. It's the right side responding to the left side. And rest and slowly come up to a standing position. Hold on to a chair to the side. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to bend the knee a little bit, allowing the low back to lengthen. And we're going to bring the leg behind us, allowing the lower back to arch a little bit. The same thing that we did on the side, we're doing now. So I'm not trying to do an exercise. I'm just trying to find the relationship between the leg going behind and the back is arching to the leg going forward and the lumbar rounding. The eyes are going a little bit high to the horizon and the eyes are going slightly down and slightly up. Slightly down. How much do I have to move the eyes to get the same reflection in the neck? Yeah, to the outside leg. So when the knee goes back, there's a little bit of an arch. And when the knee goes forward, there's a little bit of a lengthening. just the connection, the relationship between. Keep the toes on the floor. Or just bring them like an inch off the floor, just to feel the connection, not to make an exercise. Kind of waking up all the parts that are part of it. Then we can turn around and try to do the other side and see how that side responds. Again, don't think about lifting the leg high. 
Think about re the relationship between the neck and head, lumbar, and the leg moving towards the step. And the step doesn't go up high into the air, into space. The knee goes bending so the leg can come forward. But can you feel the back responding? And just start walking a little bit. 